Welcome everyone to today's session. We will discuss breaking away from ordinary meetings. Microsoft Teams offers an array of options available to users to help make meetings more engaging and more interactive. So you don't have to feel like a prisoner when you're attending virtual meetings. Today, we're going to review several tools and techniques to help you plan your escape from hosting typical meetings. If you have not already served time with me, my name is Amanda Pritchard, and I'm currently serving a life sentence in the Office of Information Technology. I have been charged and found guilty of having too much comet spirit and dealing Microsoft technology. In addition, I face charges for breaking into new technology with Microsoft and entering it into routine practices for the University of Texas at Dallas, which you could say is your standard breaking and entering charges. If being normal is a crime, then I say we all take some time to break the rules and find ways to transform the ordinary to extraordinary. I want to share with you what I have learned so that you can make your experience using this technology more meaningful for whatever area you're in. First, let me pull you on your experience in meetings. Here's the question. It's coming. Have you ever attended a meeting you felt like you needed to escape? Take a minute, that poll should pop up in our meeting. You can answer it and then press submit to have your feedback sent in. Okay, it looks like from the polls that I'm seeing coming in, there's a lot of people that need a little bit of time to break away and to escape. So thank you so much for that. It looks like quite, quite a few. So, because in this environment that we're in today, we have a limit to the amount of visitors. We currently have your microphone and cameras turned off. There's very strict rules about that in prison. In addition, while right now the chat is currently enabled, we'll be closing it down in just a minute because our warden wants to ensure that you are able to follow along without any distractions. Behind the scenes helping me out today, we have an amazing security team. The security team involves Sheriff Soy, Deputy Dennison, and Warden Abitaj. Thank you all for helping to ensure we are safe. They're gonna keep the order here today by making sure that this meeting is managed appropriately. We all know too much excitement may cause a bit of a riot and for everyone's safety, we ask that you hold your questions to the end when we can properly answer and we're in a stable environment. For those who are watching the session live today, you can use the emoji features. They're located at the top of your screen. They're in the banner. It looks like a smiley face with his hand raised. You can use that to interact, to respond to the content, or to just show some love if you want to. Feel free to use those, but for now, we're going to go ahead and break right into our session by starting with taking a look of how to first use breakout rooms. I'm going to ask you to use the raised hand emotion, the little raised hand feature. I want a raised hand if you have used this feature before. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen while you take a second to get that pulled up. Excellent. So quite a big group has used it before. Still see a few coming up. Fantastic. Thank you. You can lower your hands now. That just helps me to understand who has used it and what we're, what we're dealing with. The interface has changed a little bit recently. So I want to go ahead and show you by sharing my screen. Your names are going to show on here, but I assure you when we do the recording, we'll make sure and eliminate that. So let me move some things around here. And perfect. Soy, Sheriff Soy, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see my screen okay? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, fantastic. 
So to do breakout rooms, and I'm going to ask my team, if you don't mind, coming out of your cell for just a moment and go ahead and turn your screen on for our quick demo on breakout rooms. If you haven't used it, at the top in the banner is this feature that has the two boxes. Hey, Sheriff Soy. She's here keeping the peace, y'all. Um, and that top corner, Deputy Dennison, welcome. This top corner here is the square within the square. That's what you're going to use for breakout rooms. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Only the meeting organizer, just to be clear, only the meeting organizer can assign breakout rooms. So if you're in this session and you don't see it, it's because you did not organize today's uh, session. So from the meeting organizer, they'll be able to choose whether they want to automatically or manually assign people into each room. If it's automatic, then that teams will just assign people randomly. If you have certain inmates that you know do not get along well together, you may want to determine manually who goes into what cell. So for us, for our purposes, I am going to go ahead and break you up into a couple of different rooms. We'll pick 10 just for today. And then we're going to go ahead and select Create Rooms. Teams does this automatically for you um, because of the selection that we made. It does take just a second here. Let's see here. Oh, Deputy Dennison, did you hear the one about the guy that stole a calendar? Yeah, he got 12 months. Okay. Moving over to the participant panel, you can see where everybody has been broken up into rooms. It's automatically assigned you your positions, so you're within those rooms. I want to call out just a couple of quick features within this. If there's somebody that struggles or struggles in a little bit late, maybe just got processed through, you can still assign additional participants. When the rooms are opened, you're able to make announcements and to send any communications to the entire group at once. I don't have to jump into the 10 different rooms in order to get this information to you. If we drill down and take a look at a room and we see anybody that needs to move or be removed, you can also do that. You can rename the room if you want to have in a recurring meeting to have that same room and that same group, you can name it by whatever cell block they've been assigned to, so you can have the consistent individuals in that area. So I'm going to call attention to, oh, we just got a new one. Let's go ahead and assign. Let's see. So you can see that I clicked on assign. You can scroll through your list, select who is not yet in a room, and you're able to assign them by selecting whatever room you would like them to go to so you're able to move them. So if you do have anyone that attends late, you're able to grab them and still be sure they're put in that correct location. I'm gonna call attention really quickly to the settings. A lot of people don't know that this does exist. We know that you're all assigned a, suspe a specific sentence of time to serve. So whatever time that is that you want to have that individual in their cell, you can select a time, put that time limit and put in however many minutes. So just for the purpose of you being able to see this and be able to demonstrate this today, I am going to go ahead and move you and have you break out into rooms for just a moment so that you can see what it feels like in case you have not experienced this. And for your purposes here, to start a room, all you do is select open. It does take a few minutes to be magically whisked away through the internet and put into your new location. So let's go ahead. I'm going to open the rooms. You'll be in there for just a minute. Feel free to say hi uh, to each other. We'll go ahead and transport you there. Well, is everybody coming back? That was so quick. Okay, so team, who got it? What kind of stars end up in jail? Shooting stars. I know you, everybody was dying to know. Everyone was dying to know what it was. Okay. So I know we just very quickly went into your rooms. I had a few people that were not able to get assigned to a room. So we can certainly work on that later. Um, but in essence, when you are the meeting organizer, 
you should be able to pull everyone into those rooms and break them out. I know for our purposes, we have a little bit larger crowd and people have joined in different methods. It always works best if you are joined from a desktop computer using the desktop app. So if that, if that helps anybody. But that the basic feature of breakout rooms has been out since um, I believe November of last year. Before that, I don't I don't do math. We don't get that in jail. But it's been out for a while. There are some new features that were added, including that adding uh, the time and being able to maneuver people around. So we're going to take a little bit closer look at both what's new and what's coming, because we have heard from all of you about a number of requests of things that they want to see improved in the breakout room feature. So we have taken that feedback to Microsoft and let's take a little bit of a look at what we've got coming up. Coming up, we have heard from multiple people that they want to be able to predetermine who's going to be in breakout rooms based on their attendees. So unlike what I just did in the meeting, unlike having to quickly scramble and send somebody from one cell block to another, you could pre-assign this. This is in preview. This is a demo. It is not out for general release yet. So just know we're still holding on to this one, testing it. When it is released, you'll be able to go from your team's calendar and from there be able to add at the top. I'm not manually demoing this because I don't have access since it's not out yet. But once it is out, you'll be able to manually go from the top, and you can see at the top, it's very small in your screen right now, but at the top it says breakout rooms. It'll be a tab at the top of your meeting, just like recordings, attendance, um, whiteboard, all of those other details. It will show there before the meeting begins so that you can pre-assign rooms based on attendee status. What this means is you have sent out an invite, you have invited people, they've responded and said, yes, I can come. Once they say yes, you can pull them from that attendee list, make all of those assignments before your meeting, before your class, and be able to break people out into those unique cells so that you can have them break out during the session for those, those quiet um, group discussions. I do want to call attention, there's a few features that are not currently available in breakout rooms. If you have an audience size more than 300, okay, breakout rooms does not support it. That's too many people congregating at once. You'll have a riot on your hands. So we have to have an, a room that can be held with less than 300. You're not able to call in additional people. So if you went to a room and you wanted to invite all your friends from your department to come with you, you can't do that. Um, it's a, it's a safety feature built in. All of these other features are built in so that only those that the organizer organized and invited would be able to participate. So you can't call people in. You can't add in additional people. Um, you can't pull them in from the chat. And you can't copy that join meeting link and send it to people who are outside of your meeting. Only those that have direct permission can attend. Some of the features that are currently available that a lot of people don't know about, kind of a hidden, hidden features, is that time limit. So you can set it so that you don't have to keep track of what time did I send people, how long have they been working there. You can set a time and you can make announcements that go to all of those groups at once. You can also move individuals. If somebody says they've finished a session and they need to migrate to another group, jail transfers do occur. So you can move them from one room to another based on what their individual needs are. You can rename those rooms and you can make those assignments in recurring meetings. So if you have the same small group that needs to meet in the yard at the same time, they can all meet there consistently and it will automatically reoccur every week without you having to reschedule and reassign. If you notice some teammates that, that drop off, maybe they've gone to the shoe, you can delete a room so that they don't have to have that space there anymore until they come back for good behavior. Then you can add that room back in. So there's constant manipulation that you're able to do in these sessions to accommodate your audience's needs. Okay. I know that that was a brief overview of breakout rooms, 
our warden is constantly looking for feedback to keep all of our inmates in line. And he's here today to help share an easy strategy to keep control of the system using a simple method of adding polling to your meetings. So please welcome Warden Abitaj to my cell. Warden, I'll release control of the screen now so that you can have full control. I don't want to add time to my sentence for being non-compliant. Thank you, Imin Amanda. You've been doing a great job and you're serving your sentence well. Perfect. Now let's move on to uh, what we just discussed about polling on Teams and channels. As you saw early on in the meeting, that Amanda, Inmate Amanda, released a poll on the channel that we could choose our answers from. Now we'll do something similar to a test meeting right here. To do so, I would ask you to first go to your calendar tab and then navigate over to the meeting you want to add a poll to. Then we'll click on the meeting and chat with participants. Once you're on there, I would ask you to go to the plus sign at the top. This is usually to add a tab, and today we'll be adding a forms tab. Once we go ahead and we have this option, it's a quick intro. I'll be covering all of this right now. We'll click on add. Once we're able to do so, as you can see, it'll give us an option to create a poll. We click and save. And now we have the polling tab at the top. As this meeting does not have an option yet, we'll go ahead and create a new poll. Usually with the forms tab, you get two options, a multiple choice poll and a multiple choice quiz where you can select if there's a right or wrong question. But today, for the example, I will go ahead and add a multiple choice poll. So according to our theme, I would like to ask you all, what is the best prison food? <laughs> we have some nice options here, like slop or gruel. And then as you can see, there's only one right answer for this one, so I'll not choose the multiple answers option. You have some other options that include share results automatically after voting. So for example, if the poll is closed or the voting is done, you will see the answers on the screen. You can also have anonymous responses when you would not see which users or the audience would not see which users chose which option. The third option, allow others to co-author, lets you have other users help you create forms and questions. So for right now, I'd go ahead and click save. <clears throat> Another good feature is that before, after you click save, it does not launch the poll. It gives you a draft option to, make, to have a final look before you actually release the poll to your audience. One thing I also like about polls and the importance of polls is that it's really important to gather information from your coworkers and teammates, be it if you're teaching a class or getting a, a participa participating in a live discussion you might want to hear what your users or teammates have to say, which I believe MS Forms does really well here. So I'll go ahead and see as this is the draft. Only I can see this right now. I can edit this before before going on. I can even delete it, but I the, but I can launch it from right from a button here. So I'll go ahead and click launch. And as this was test meeting, you will not see this poll here, but this poll is now embedded into that call. So whenever that happens, we will be able to take care of it. If you have any other if you have any questions, please just hold them on to the end of the meeting, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Warden. I know another way to dispel the fear of a prison break is to set meeting options, so you can clearly determine who's in charge and who may need some restraints in place. So, can we look at this often underutilized tool by heading to? We can look at either the Teams calendar or in a chat. And I did want to make note that all of the features we're showing can be used in general meetings, private meetings, or channel meetings. So you can use polling and breakout rooms uh, in either of those so that you can use them for classes or just initial meetings. Meeting options help you to set control over your meeting so that you have the, the complete control that you need. Let's go ahead and drill down and click on meeting options. So from the calendar, you click on meeting options to see what those rules and, and regulations are in place. So once that site pulls up, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Raise your hand if you've ever been in a meeting and somebody has started the recording st or stopped the recording 
that you did not want to happen, use the raised hand feature real quick. I want to see if anybody else has had that occurrence happen. There's a way to prevent that, and it's by you setting the controls in place for your environment for your meeting. Thank you for raising your hands. You can lower them now. I know this has happened to a number of people. So in your meeting options, you can make changes to who can bypass the lobby. For the meeting that we're in today, I had it restricted at first, and then I opened it up after my team and I were ready to launch the meeting. So in the bypass the lobby, when you select everyone, you can drill down and see there's different options for who you want to be able to start that meeting. You can let people bypass the lobby or wait. And as for presenters under who can present, this is going to tell you who has control over starting the, the recording, starting the transcription, or stopping it. If you don't want everyone to have access, lock it down. You can set specific individuals to have access to those recording features by selecting or removing their names based on their behavior. Underneath that, you can also, for today's session, to make sure we don't have distractions, we disabled your mic and your camera. You are not able to turn those features on unless we change those permissions. Let's use the raised hand feature. Anybody else been in a meeting and somebody joins the call late and you hear them um, yelling at their, their dog, you hear them sneezing, ordering a cup of coffee, cooking dinner, doing laundry, right? I, I think in our environment, we probably all have been guilty of that. So to avoid that from happening and avoid that discomfort of being the one that causes that, you can disable that in the meeting options so that there's no way they can come on and cause an interruption. You can also turn the chat on and off. If you need concentrated times for presentation and you need quiet, uh, uninterrupted times, you can disable that. If you want that collaboration, you can turn it back on. Make note, you can change these options in the middle of the meeting. You can have them set up one way and then change them later so that you can adjust the environment so that it best suits the control that you need for your particular session. Um, at the very end, allow reactions. Those are our fun emojis. If you would like to have those or not, you can turn that on or off. And the notorious save button is what's going to verify that final sentence of how you want your meeting managed. Select that, it'll take effect immediately and allow you to change and adjust that particular session based on those needs. All right, Warden, I'm gonna take over control with permission granted. I can grant permission, but I have a question before that. Yes, sir. Why are handcuffs called souvenirs? Souvenirs, I don't know. Because they're made for tourists. Oh, uh, I, I see what you did there. I'm tracking and I'm loving it. Thank you, Warden. I appreciate your time and your leadership. And I'm still rooting that you'll appeal um, my sentence and allow me to be released. If you've enjoyed today's session and you want to unlock your Slammer swag, we have a couple of opportunities for you to get some of this elite swag based on today's event. So stay tuned. We've got a few items that we're going to give away. I'm going to go ahead and pull our list from those who pre-registered. We're going to draw a couple of names, and then we do have a few additional opportunities for those who complete the survey and give us feedback on today's session. Julie Kay, winner number one. Let's go ahead, congratulations, Julie. You're in the big house with me. One moment, let's see, oh, it's right on the border. Miss UK, I don't know what it is with the case. Maybe it's a new prison gang, I'm not sure. But we've got two K names, fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this so that we can go back. Congratulations on winning your Slammer swag. Thank you for being here. Uh, we do offer these trainings throughout the semester. We usually host two a month. 
If you would like to attend a future session, grab your phone. You're lucky that you're able to have one. Not all of us have that as a resource. So if you would like to come to another training, do more time with me, you can rehabilitate your tech skills. Scan this QR code, register for one of our upcoming sessions. We would love to see you again. I don't get a lot of visitors, so please come join me. Um, it's very therapeutic to have you come uh, visit me in prison here. In addition, at, for our final conclusion, we do want to ask how we did today. If you could take a few moments, scan the QR code. There's the link. It's also in the chat. So whether today made you want to plan another escape route or if you feel like we could post bail, give us that feedback, help us to plan upcoming sessions and let us know what you want to know about Microsoft or technology in general, because we're here to serve. I'm going to conclude with just listing a few additional resources that we have here. For anyone that likes things broken down and listed out, we do have a few articles prepared for you on how to do some of the things that we showed today. So I'm going to leave this up, let you scan it. I'm going to ask Deputy Dennison to please open up the chat so that any of my people that have final comments or questions, I'll be scanning those and allowing you to complete those surveys. It's also in the chat. So if you need to complete it there, you may do so. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, we're here to serve you. We're here to work beside you. So anytime you feel imprisoned by your environment, reach out. We're here to help.